All right, so we're honored to have Quiche's mother, Tony Jacobs, with us tonight from Richmond, along with Natalie Wilson from the Black and Missing Foundation. Ladies, thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you thank for, you having, for having, having us. Me. Yeah, thank you. Tony, I want to start with you. Uh, mm -hmm. We're coming up on five years since your daughter's disappearance. How are you and the family holding up? Um, I guess as well as expected. Um, just doing a lot of praying, you know, just trying to maintain and still push and keep Kishay's name out there. So, yeah, that's it's a it's difficult because it's coming up on her birthday, but we're maintaining. Mm -hmm. Well, take us back to um, September of 2016. Tell us about the last time you saw or heard from Kishé. How, how was she doing? Were there any signs that something was wrong? No, actually, um, she said she was going with one of her friends, going with her friends over one of her friends' house. And basically, she had already made plans to be back home the next day because she was going to cook breakfast for her brother because he don't know how to cook. Um, but our last conversation we had is, um, I'll see you in the morning, like I always do. I'll be like, okay, be careful. Let me know that you made it there safe. We text, and she was like, all right, Mom, I'm here. I was like, all right. She was like, I'm okay. I'll see you in the morning. And I was like, okay. I love you. Love you, too. That was a typical conversation. So nothing seemed out of the ordinary, like, she wouldn't be coming home the next day or anything like that. Now take us through the the weeks and months that followed Quiche's disappearance. I know that you also lost your son during that time. So how were you able to to go on? How were you able to keep optimism? I mean, like every everybody, I have my moment. Um, I lost my son three months after Quiche went missing. So I had a double fight on my hand. I had to fight to make sure my son murdered, get, get justice for my son's murder, and make sure I keep Quiche's information out there. Um, my main focus, I don't honestly believe I had an opportunity to grieve for my son because I was scared it was going to take me mm -hmm. in a place where I couldn't do what I need mm -hmm. to do for Quiche. So, you know, that was the most difficult part of it all that, you know, I ain't gonna lie, I was on the borderline. I was like, felt like sometimes I was gonna go crazy, but with the help of my family and my friends, I was able to maintain, you know, they helped me as much as they could, but my main focus was to make sure that, you know, the police stayed on top of Keisha's case and they wouldn't forget it, wouldn't get slipped in the cracks. I needed to keep it out in the community and do what's needed mm -hmm. to make sure everybody's aware of what was going on. So, yeah, so it was difficult, but, you know, I had to do what I had to do because as a mother, both of my they would have told, both of them would have told you, you know, my mom got my back, and so I'm going to make sure they straight and do what I got to do and fight for them. Wow. Tony, let's talk about how police handled this case. I know your relationship with them has grown over time, but at first, I know you said that it was a little rocky. What was the issue? When I, my issue with the police when we first started this was, um, I don't think they believed it. Um, because from the time that I pointed, reported Kishay missing, you know, the cop, he actually said to me, oh, she's 21, she's fine. How you know she's missing? She, maybe she just don't want to be bothered. You know, and I had to mm -hmm. look at that man, hope he talked to myself and was like, look, I said, this is my daughter. I talked, I pulled out my phone and literally showed this man how much this girl touched me and talked to me. If she did not want to go call, be found, the only thing she had to do was say, mom, give me some space. But she wanted to leave mm -hmm. Richmond. We have so many family members in the area that she could have went and stayed with somebody. You know, and I had to explain it. It was like they put it on the back burner. So it was like they didn't believe me. So it basically, they didn't really look for Quiche or really follow up until like maybe a week later after I reported her missing. So it was a lot of frustration and I was angry. I was very angry. So yeah.
the first part of it. Well, bring us up to speed. Um, Well, Tony, bring us up to speed on what police are doing now. Um, I understand that they've assigned a new detective, correct, to the case. So have they made any progress? So they assigned a new detective because the old detective basically left the police force and he's gone to do something else, I think, with the state. Um, I got to meet the new detective. Uh, Last time we talked, he said he was going through the Quiche's case file, um, not making any decisions on it based off what the former police officer said, detective said about her case. He said he wanted to get fresh eyes on it to see exactly, make sure won't nothing miss and get his own opinion of what's going on. But since then, I really haven't heard anything. You know, um, I think he texted me mm-hmm. and was like, as of right now, there's no new information on the case so at this point i don't know exactly what they're doing because he hasn't contacted me now i I know you started a a missing persons day in richmond to bring other families with similar experiences together tell us more about the work you do with both police and the community now um i think My main purpose of working directly with the police department is to give them a direct look at a parent that's going through the situation. You know, they let them know they have to be more sensitive than what they are. Um, With the community, the community, I mainly just focus on trying to bring awareness. I think a lot, I think with Quiche being missing, it opened the eyes of, our, of my community in the city of Richmond, period. I mean, there's people out there that still act like they ain't never heard none, heard about Quiche or what happened to her. But mm-hmm. it's a lot of people mm-hmm. who do pay attention. And I'm able to go into the community with the police department to go into the, these communities and talk to these people and talk to these children and let them know what the importance is of, you know, being more observant of everything that you do, your observation of people who you say is your friend and let them know that everybody you say they're your friends are not your friends. So I'm, I'm engaged in the community to make sure that people are aware of what's going on and if, let them know if it is a situation, they can come to me and I can pretty much kind of, I don't want to say guide them, but guide them in the situation to let them know, hey, this is what you need to do. This is what that police yeah. are talking about when they say what they say, you know. And then I, some, it's been on occasions that I don't went to the police department and was like, hey, somebody said their family member's missing, but they're not getting the support. So I'm able to go and talk to them and be like, make sure they follow back up with these people to help, you know, when somebody, something happens like this. So, yeah, I think I'm opening the eyes on both sides, basically. 